In this video, we're going to be going over adding and subtracting rational expressions. Rational expressions, remember, are anything that look like a fraction. So I've got numerators and denominators, and our class will have x's on top and bottom. So before we actually get started in the rational expressions, let's review fraction rules. So that same idea applies to adding and subtracting rational expressions. I must have a common denominator before I can do anything. Also, something to note, make sure you know how to do example one before you come into class. So if I have the fraction one over two plus three over five, I cannot add one half and three over five unless I get a common denominator. So with 2 and 5, my least common denominator would be 10. So I want to get both of those fractions to look like over 10. Well, to get from 2 to 10, I can multiply top and bottom by 5, and I'll have 5 over 10. And the other side can multiply top and bottom by 2, which will give me 6 over 10. Now that I've got a common denominator, I can add up 5 plus 6, put it all over 10, so I will have 11 over 10 would be my answer. So example 1 is adding and subtracting when the denominators are already common. So I check my denominators, I've got x minus 1, x minus 1. So because those things already have a common denominator, I can go ahead and stick the fraction under, or stick the fraction all over the same denominator. So 3x squared plus 2x minus, now anytime I have a minus sign, I have to put everything in parentheses because this problem says minus this whole thing, minus this whole part right here, so I have to make sure I stick that in parentheses. If you don't, you will get the wrong answer. And Again, that's only true for subtraction. Now that I've got everything on one denominator, I can go through and simplify and combine up like terms. So 3x squared doesn't have anything to combine with. However, I have negative 10x plus 5. So all I did was distribute that negative. And when I'm looking for like terms, I've got a 2x and a negative 10x. So that is going to give me negative 8x. And then my plus 5 is going to carry down all over x minus 1. Now once you've gotten everything on one fraction and gotten it simplified, this is when you can go to your factoring and cancel. So now this is what starts chapter 7.1. This is how we started the whole chapter. So whatever method you use to factor, you will get 3x plus 5 and x minus 1 all over x minus 1. And then I will look for things to cancel. x minus 1 cancels. So I will be left with 3x plus 5. Since the whole denominator went away, I don't need to write over 1. So my final answer would be 3x plus 5. Now in the second example, in example 1, part B, I have still a common denominator, 2m to over 2n. So I'm going to stick both fractions on top of that common denominator. Now I look for like terms, so I've got 8m over 2n. Now again, this is the only part you can cancel, is once you've got it on one fraction and simplified. So 8 and 2 will simplify to 4, m on top, and then n on the bottom. So those are my final answers. 
Now in example two, letter C looks a little bit different. I now have different denominators. They are not common yet. I need to find what's called the least common denominator. Just like when we were adding our regular fractions, I had to find something that I could multiply either both or one fraction to make them match. Now the trick to these is anytime you see something that looks like it may factor, factor it first. So this thing I can rewrite as x plus 5 and x minus 2. Now that's the same thing as x squared plus 3x minus 10. So now I'm comparing. The fraction on the left, it has x plus 5 already. Well, if I were to multiply this top and bottom, this and this, by x minus 2, then I would have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. And the reason that is is because my least common multiple, sorry, my least common denominator is x plus 5 and x minus 2. So I want to make both denominators match x plus 5 and x minus 2. Now the way I do that is on the left fraction, I have to multiply it top and bottom by x minus 2. Whatever I do to the bottom of the fraction, I have to do to the top. That's the only way to keep it equal. So now on top, I have 3 times x minus 2. And my other fraction is not going to change because it already has the common least common denominator as its denominator. So now I'm going to go through and put them all on one fraction. So I have put both of the numerators on top of one fraction. The only reason I can do that is because they now have a common denominator. So now I'm going to work on simplifying, combining up like terms. So I'm going to distribute this 3 and have 3x minus 6. I don't need to write the plus negative where it says plus negative 6x. I can just write that as minus 6x minus 9. Plus negative is the same thing as subtracted. I do not need to distribute anything on the bottom simply because I'm hoping that something on the top is going to factor and then cancel with the bottom. So I'm looking for like terms. I've got 3x and negative 6x which will give me negative 3x and then I also have negative 6 and negative 9 which will give me negative 15 on top. So I'm going to carry my denominator over. Now normally when you get here most of the time something is going to factor and cancel. I can only do that though once I've simplified the whole numerator and gotten it onto one fraction. I can't cancel anywhere before now. Well, I see on top that I could factor out a negative 3, and I'd be left with x plus 5, and then I'll have my denominator. Now I can cancel. Once I have factored, and once I've gotten everything onto one fraction, so I cancel x plus 5, so my final answer is negative 3 over x minus 2. All right, my final example, I've got example 4, number 2. And actually, 
this and your notes is x squared minus 9. So I see that the denominators are not the same, so I need to make them the same. Again, anytime something looks like it factors, factor it. And in the bottom right, it is difference of squares. If you do not recognize difference of squares yet, you need to fix that. So this thing is the same thing as x plus 3, x minus 3. Because I've got two perfect squares, x squared and 9, being separated by a subtraction sign. So I'm just going to rewrite this with my new denominator. So I'm looking for what is the least common denominator. Well, x minus 3x plus 3 has two factors, and x plus 3 has one factor. So I want to find the least common, meaning the smallest or the easiest. So if I were to multiply the left fraction by x minus 3 on top and bottom, I would get the common denominator. I would have x plus 3, x minus 3. So that's my least common denominator. Now again, on the fraction on the left, the way I get to that least common denominator is I multiply top and bottom by x minus 3. So I have 1, and I multiplied x minus 3. On the right, I don't need to multiply by anything because it already has the least common denominator as its denominator. So nothing had to change on that fraction. Now I don't really need to distribute a 1, so I'm just going to go ahead and put them all over one fraction. Now normally... I really emphasize put that thing in parentheses, especially if it's a subtraction sign. But this is just a monomial, so there's nothing to distribute, but it still wouldn't hurt to get in the habit of putting everything in its parentheses. And so then I have my common denominator. Again, leave those factored out. Don't foil the denominator ever. You're only going to be foiling numerators. Once you factor and find the least common denominator, leave it factored. All right, now I'm looking for like terms. So x and negative 3 and negative 2x, I don't have any like terms, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Now, I don't really like to deal with negative numbers, especially in front of the x squared, so I'm going to factor out a negative, and then that's going to give me a positive x squared. I'm going to factor out a negative 1. That will give me a positive 2x squared minus x plus 3. And then I'll have the rest of that on the bottom. So whichever method you use, factor that. I urge you to get better at guess and check. So you'll get 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 with the negative 1 out front when you factor it. Now, I don't see anything that will cancel, so that will be my final answer. But again, this is the step you would cancel if you could cancel. I don't have any common factors, so that is my final answer.